Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods here on this Monday. This is a big week in the NFL, because come Thursday night, we have the full schedule release. I can't wait to have that going on. Uh, I think maybe I'll start getting the clock going now because I think we're we're probably not too far away from the beginning of the NFL season where it's not like crazy. You don't want to see like 200 and some days um, to the start of the season. Um, so we'll probably go ahead and get the clock going today. I'm hoping that today I can get some of the stuff like getting the outdoor studio together uh, going again today. And some of the other things that I've been wanting to do, unfortunately, there's just not enough time in the days to get everything done. We have a couple of things we got to deal with this morning. You know, I've been in my lane, minded my own business, and like cockroaches, Eagle fans have been descending upon the channel. And now the King Cockroach, the King Cockroach, Philly 500 has now fired shots. He is now trying to take one of our players. Um, probably you guys have seen Micah Parsons, who is a, you know, he, he's a supporter of the hometown teams. Okay, we've seen him with the hockey team and, you know, dropping the puck and things like that. Now we saw him at the Philadelphia 76ers, you know, game and everything else and so on. And so yesterday he was there at the, you know, the, the playoff game and you could see him wearing a 76ers jersey. Now, what I want to point out to you, though, right now is, to me, as I'm looking at this, doesn't he look like he's bulked up? He definitely looks like he's bulked up there. Doesn't he? He's beginning to look. He's beginning to look more hulkish. Those shoulders look broader to me. I didn't notice that last night because I was seeing red, uh, the 76ers red. And, you know, here was the thing that's got Eagle fans so hopeful. You know, the funny thing is, is they always talk about how much we hate the Cowboys. We don't want none of that Cowboys stank. But damn it, they don't want our players. Damn it, they don't want our players. Look, look. So here it is. Those shoulders. Look at that. He looking like the Hulk. Look at that. So Philly 500 has gone off. I mean, literally yesterday. Let, let's. See, I'm just gonna get a clip of it. Just a little, little taste. I hate seeing Philly 500 happy. Can you imagine being such a good GM, such an evil genius oh, that Lord. teams are purposely trying to avoid trading you players only to get those teams to wind up trading you players? That's right. Howie Roseman has done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're gonna talk about it. And of course. Mm -hmm. Michael Parsons bleeds green. There is no doubt There was no green there, mind. Philly. There was Michael no green. Michael Parsons wants to be in Philly. It's just the way it is. It's halftime of the Sixers game, and I wanted to bang out this video before I watched the out. game. And, you know, if you're new to the channel and you like this content, mm -hmm. make sure you hit that like button. Make, more importantly, make sure you subscribe to The Most Censored. The Most Throttled. And I'm telling you, I was throttled a lot last week. Pause. Pause. Content creator in all of the internet. That's right. Most censored, mm -hmm. most throttled. There's just no question okay. about Okay, get to it, Philly. Uh, sure we ain't got all day. Sure like. And to all those who've been subscribed for a while, thank you for all the support you give to me. It truly means a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, you're probably saying, all right, Philly, what are we talking about today? Right now, I've got a lot of Cowboy fans throwing things at the camera, at the TV. I'm not throwing anything. Get my head, but I'm ducking. I'm too fast for them. And, and they're pissed off because they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Okay. But Micah Parsons loves Philly. He wants to be an eagle. I believe he believes he, green. You he believe, okay, we're going to stop there. Because, see, here's the thing that's kind of funny, though, okay? He didn't wear an eagle's jersey. He didn't wear an eagle's jersey. He didn't. He wore a Philadelphia 76ers. He's been there with the hockey team. He ain't been there. He wasn't there during the playoffs or the Super Bowl wearing an Eagles jersey, Philly. And here it is. Allen Iverson. Look at this. 
Allen Iverson, check it out. Shout out to Coles Cowboy who shared this with, with, with me on uh, Twitter. Allen Iverson there wearing an Emmett Smith jersey, wearing everything, cow you know, even, even the bandana, Cowboys, there with the owner, Jerry Jones. Shots fired back at you. Shots fired back at you, Philly. Just slow your roll, okay? He does not want to be an eagle, okay? He's supporting his hometown teams with the exception of the Eagles. But if it makes you sleep better at night, wanting one of our great players, by all means, do that. Now, a couple of things that are going on. It's kind of crazy because Dan Snyder is leaving the building, and yet controversy is still following the commanders. Apparently, the commanders contacted Andrew Luck about coming out of retirement to be their quarterback. Jim Ursi is so pissed off that he may try and sue the commanders for tampering. You can't make this stuff up. You literally can't make this stuff up. It, it's kind of crazy. The NFL, I think, will be a better place without Dan Snyder. I just think it will. All right, so here's the thing. We're going here. We've got the Cowboys, we've got the Eagles, and most people believe it's a two-horse race in the NFC East, okay? Sorry, Giant fans, you'll be good, but I don't know that you have the firepower that these two mega teams have. In fact, people look and say San Francisco, Dallas, and Eagles, and maybe, maybe Seattle are the teams to beat in the NFC this year. Maybe. That those are the big ones, and then you got everybody else. You know, Tampa Bay's falling off. Who knows with New Orleans, with Derek Carr, if they're going to be that much better. Carolina. Some people say watch Carolina because they may be better now, but but I still don't think they're quite there yet. But but be that as it may, be that as it may. You know, Minnesota is always Minnesota with Kirk Cousins, and the Bears may be better. They've always got a good defense, but then they're always lacking on offense. And, and the Packers without Aaron Rodgers. Who knows? Maybe they'll be better without Aaron Rodgers. You know, the, they'll be drama free at least. You know, so the thing about the Eagles, the Eagles, they deemed it a great draft. Okay. The problem is, is this, and we've learned this too, is it's hard to plug in rookies and get great production out of them. Off the bat, we've been fortunate more than most, you didn't expect Micah Parsons to come through and to be Rookie Defensive Player of the Year. You didn't expect Tyler Smith to start out practicing at guard, have to move to left tackle, the hardest spot on the offensive line, and actually play really, really well. That's more of the exception than the rule. You didn't expect CeeDee Lamb to be really good in a starter, contributing right off the bat. We have been good with that. The Eagles, unfortunately, have lost five starters on their defense, along with Jonathan Gannon, who got the team to have 70 sacks. Now, that's not to say that the guys they drafted aren't good players. Jordan Davis. I wanted to get Jordan Davis. I didn't want to trade up for him because I looked at it and said he's a two-down player, but he could push the pocket, and he may end up being a great player. But what they actually got out of him to start the season and through the season, you didn't look at him and say Jordan Davis was a game changer for the Eagles as a rookie. He may be his second year or third year, fourth year, something like that. But right off the bat, he wasn't. You looked at a guy like Damone Clark. I'm sorry, Jacoby Dean. Jacoby Dean. You know, where they went crazy. Oh, my God, we got Jacoby Dean and Jordan Davis. We're going to be unstoppable. Didn't really do much, really didn't get on the field. It wasn't to say that they, they, they may not have had the opportunities and stuff, but you didn't get instant impact from those players. And maybe you didn't quite need that right off the bat, although they did go out and sign Namak and Sue. And if Jordan Davis was everything he was advertised to be, then you would say, we don't need Namak and Sue. Be that as it may. The Eagles will rely on these young guys off the bat. Young guys 
eyes are wide open and don't necessarily end up having great starts to the career. You're now having to play against great players across the line. You're now maybe not having as great a talent where you're just better than everybody because of the team that you're on in college, where you're playing teams that have lesser talent. In the NFL, even the bad teams have great talent. Even the bad teams have better talent than what you may have faced against good teams. Everybody who's playing in the NFL was a top player in college. So that could be a problem for those guys to get acclimated to the NFL. The Cowboys, on the other hand, here's the thing that's really interesting about the Cowboys. The Cowboys, I think, were the third or fourth youngest team last year in the NFL. Believe it or not, now, you know, getting rid of Jason Peters right there gets you even younger immediately. Now, you're influencing, um, excuse me, the, those young guys played valuable time. Tyler Smith, lots of snaps as a, as a rookie. You know, Micah Parsons has played a lot of snaps in his two seasons. You have young guys that are experienced. And the Cowboys have players that they're not going to rely on the rookies to come out the box to elevate the team. Their rookies are to supplement the team. Am I making sense here? And on top of it, here's where it really gets to be good. There's players that we keep forgetting about. You know, we're thinking about the Tyler Smiths and the Overshones and stuff. Man, we can't wait to see those guys on here. But see, what we forget about is those guys that we drafted last year and players that we brought in last year that now have an offseason of being able to really feel comfortable. Remember, Hankins was brought in week seven last year and made an immediate impact for those first four games on the run stopping for the Cowboys. He didn't have the playbook in the offseason, the training camp, and working with everybody else. But he immediately came in and played well, got injured, and you could see how the Cowboys' run defense took a step back. Now, he's got the whole offseason now, working with Dan Quinn and stepping up. Then you look at somebody like Sam Williams. Sam Williams is a freak of nature. To be as big as he is and as fast as he is, is unbelievable. As a rookie having four sacks in limited playing because of Dorrance Armstrong's play, because of Dante Fowler, he's going to get more opportunities and he will probably step up and make you say, Randy who? Second year could start beginning the process of really getting into the groove. That's another big improvement. Damone Clark, remember, this time last year, we were talking about Damone Clark being a red shirt year because he had had his back fused, a couple of his vertebrae fused together. And if you don't know what that is, they'll take a piece of bone like out of your hip, you know, cut out a little section of it. They'll take two vertebrae, basically cut a slot. They'll take that piece of bone. They'll put it in there and it will lock those two vertebrae together. That's a hell of a healing process. The fact that he got on the field and had 47 tackles after having that done in the summer, having no training camp, no OTAs, literally coming in cold, and had three tackles to one to Dakobe Dean is amazing. So now you're adding more speed, more speed on this defense with guys who aren't rookies, and then you're able to go ahead and bring up a guy like Mozzie Smith, bring him into the fold where his eyes aren't wide open, ready to roll in a rotation. I'm going to say... I think the Cowboys on their defense are in a better situation than where the Eagles are with theirs. Just do. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just plain stupid. But I actually think the Cowboys on defense have the advantage over the Eagles. And that's where I look at this and say, change in coordinators, a change in philosophy. Five starters, 
gone and relying on rookies to pick up the slack. I believe the Eagles' defense takes a step back. I believe the Cowboys' defense takes a step up. Now, again, we'll see in a couple of months what actually happens on the field. But as a Cowboy fan, you should look and say you should feel really, really good about where we are. Uh, exchanging Stephon Gilmore for Anthony Brown, that alone should make you feel a lot better. Okay, good people. It's time for me to get to work. I got lots to do here as we get ready to uh, get things handled, to get back down to Waynesboro to work on the Red Brick House. And um, we got a lot of work to do here at the workshop. We got a lot of work to do here on the studio and things to get ready for this NFL season. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I'll see you tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing.